Welcome back to the Hot 7 Nightly News. Thank you for staying with us. St. Lucia is only one of the many Caribbean islands which will now need to negotiate new trade deals following Brexit. The United Kingdom is scheduled to leave the European Union on the 29th of March, a move which has garnered international attention and will no doubt reshape trade and international policies around the world, with the Caribbean being no exception. One top-level diplomat assures that every measure is being made to ensure St. Lucia is not adversely affected. Brexit is the cleverly formed word created about four years ago, merging the words Britain and exit, which seems simple enough to say but clearly difficult to put into practice. Over the past two years, Brexit has been a controversial issue, and after a recent vote placed in the lower house of parliament in January, it has now left many confused over the way forward. UK Prime Minister Theresa May placed a motion before lawmakers asking them to agree to her withdrawal agreement with the European Union. The bill was rejected by 432 votes to 202. The 230 vote defeat is thought to be the largest in UK political history. Despite this, Brexit is still scheduled to occur on the 29th of March 2019. Brexit will affect existing trade laws within the European Union, and many wonder whether this will have any effect on the Caribbean. St. Lucia's High Commissioner to London says that diplomats and other officials around the region are working assiduously to ensure that the region is not adversely affected. So, what is important for us is the relationship that we will have with Britain post-Brexit and also our relationship with the European Union to ensure that the preferences that we have, the trading preferences and relationships that we've had over the many years, uh, they're not, they don't suffer at all. And I'm glad that currently there's, a, there's dialogue taking place between Cary Forum and the, and the British to ensure that there's a rollover of the current trading regime so that there is no, we won't suffer at all, um, even when they exit the European Union at the end of March. And now we have to also renegotiate with the European Union a new protocol. Mayers adds that a revised foreign policy will be made ahead of next year's budget following a foreign official's retreat, which was held last week. All of our ambassadors and high commissioners were here for that retreat. What came out of that um, retreat? Well, I think it was very good. Um, this was the first time everybody was meeting together and we got to know each other because some of us didn't know who the others were and so we were able to connect and have discussions as to how we move our foreign policy forward from, from here on and also to be able to influence the, the budget for next year based on the plans and, and the, the, the projections that we want to pursue. Um, now we know each other and we can then work better together. Guy Mayers was announced as St. Lucia's new High Commissioner to London during a statement to the House of Parliament by the Prime Minister in 2016. Mayers is a former president of the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce and also a former Minister for Trade and Commerce. The Minister within the Ministry of Culture and Creative Industries, Fortuna Bellrose, is addressing concerns shared by members of the public about the budget allocated for Independence Day celebrations. She says it was all well worth the price. The type of display that we did, did cost money. There's no doubt about it. But you know, we're only going to be 40 once in our lifetime. And I don't think there'll be another 40 again. And so I think for those of us children who are here, um, and our children who witnessed this, I think it was a celebration really worthy of it. This was the bold stance taken by the minister within the Ministry of Culture and Creative Industries, Fortuna Belrose, in relation to concerns raised about the price tag for the Independence Day celebrations. In the previous clip, Belrose addressed the half a million dollar price of the fireworks display, which wowed the masses at the stroke of midnight, ushering in the island's 40th independence anniversary. Belrose continued on to say that in such occasions, the bigger picture should be focused on rather than the price of the events. I don't think we should look to quantify it in terms of the money. I think what we wanted was the experience um, and the fact that it has added so much value and connectivity, you know, for our people. I think that to me is much more than any amount of money um, can, 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 can measure. And, and it hasn't been noted that it was a local service provider. And the local service provider is Mr. Branford, who yeah. normally does the, 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 the services for 
for us at, um, at other events. When asked the question, what about the hospitals, with regards to the expenditure, Belrose implored the masses to worry not, as her government has it all under control. With all this money being spent on something as, like fireworks, etc., other important initiatives like the uh, hospitals, etc., they're being... They're still not, that's still not solved. Let me tell you something. I think, you know, the good thing about my government is that we plan ahead. And we plan for Independence 40. We're planning for the hospital. We're planning for the airport. We're planning for all the projects that you see will unfold um, over, the next, over the next few months. And so remember to initiatives around patriotism should not be quantified in terms of the money. I think we should be happy. And for me, as a, as, a, as, a, as a St. Lucian citizen, I was just happy with what I saw in terms of a response to, by St. Lucians to the whole the, the, the fireworks display. I think that lifted all of us, you know, as a citizenry, and there's no amount of money that can compensate or cost. You know, um, um, we should be worried about the cost with respect to the, 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 the purchase of fireworks for this display. It did what it had to do for us as a citizen, lift our spirits and put us in the right frame of mind going forward as a country. According to the minister, the amount of money pumped back into the local economy during the celebrations is sure to dwarf the amount spent in the budget. The total amount allocated to the celebrations was $3 million. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. The phrase, happy like a birthday, is a quintessential St. Lucian saying which is nothing if not apt, as everyone was in high spirits for St. Lucia's 40th. The weekend's activities began with Thursday's concert, which featured dozens of artists from Calypso to Soka Monarchs, as well as presentations from school students and others. Thursday night culminated with an objectively striking firework presentation, which lasted for about 30 minutes, officially welcoming February 22nd, the 40th independence anniversary of St. Lucia. Hours later, the celebrations continued with the military presentation by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force Band, followed by the military parade, which received applause from many present. Today's event, in one word, fun. Fantastic. I followed the parade from morning till what's happening this afternoon. Well, we noticed they were having fun. So we realized instead of just military, we try and blend in a little soccer. We try and put in a little act from Dominica so we could compete against them. We have some guests with us from Dominica. We have some fresh soldiers with us. But the whole parade this afternoon where we're having fun is about Dominica, Cadet Force, and the Royal St. Lucia Police Band coming together in unity. In fact, a video featuring a police officer leading the Royal St. Lucia Police Force Band with raunchy moves, inciting laughter and applause from the crowd in the city center has gone viral. Everyone seemed to be having a good time, especially the young ones. Boys are all to me now, so fun to girls are handy, made out so candy. Boys go to Jupiter to get more stupid, and girls go to college to get more knowledge. Boys drink rum to get more dumb, girls drink Pepsi to get more sick. Eat TV you, eat TV Tina, eat TV to you, sing I love you. The weekend was carefully crafted to keep the city busy with activity. We essentially wanted to bring the city alive tonight um, in preparation for, you know, hailing our 40th anniversary of independence. As you know, that happens at 12.01 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, so it's really to really bring some life to the city. And But you have persons, it's just a menu of activities happening. Uh, you can decide which one you want to take on. Uh, like I said, we have the concert happening at Constitution Park. We have another one on Jeremy Street. There's the Storio St. Lucia at the Sab. And then we have the fireworks display starting from 11.55 p.m. right through to about 12.30 a.m. So, like I said, it's, it's, it's a menu. You decide which one of you want to take in. A few things marred the three-day event. One includes the criticism from some that the celebrations were only held in the city and nowhere else. 
The South is a big part of our celebrations. Remember, we're not finished. The Prince is coming. You understand? And we have a full lineup for the South. What people yes. from the South are saying is that the spirit of patriotism and independence was felt heavily in the city. And if you travel to the South, super viewpoint on Independence Day, Independence Eve, you didn't really feel that independent spirit. People were saying there were no activities in the South, they were not even properly decorated. What do you have to say about that? I really can't say anything about that. <laughs> No, but I think the, the, the critical thing for us, though, as citizens of this country, is to ensure that we do what is right by us. In all the town and village councils, we have local government councils that were mobilized to be able to ensure that the communities were engaged and active um, during the season. So, yeah, that's surprising if, if nothing was felt. The other, a moment where at the official flag-raising ceremony, the flag was raised upside down. The error was seen after moments, and the flag was then set to rights. And then the incidents of road accidents around the island, including young women who fell off motorcycles, resulted in some unsightly wounds to the thigh and buttocks area. In the end, many considered the 40th Independence Anniversary official celebrations a well-planned production. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solaj Alfred. The St. Lucia Cross has been bestowed upon St. Lucia's elite pathologist, Dr. Stephen King. He spoke to Hot 7 News about his life's work, the path he has undertaken to help empower youth, and what the honor of the St. Lucia Cross means to him. He spoke with Solange Alfred. The St. Lucia Cross of the Order of St. Lucia is awarded to an individual of outstanding distinguished service of national importance to St. Lucia. The Golden Award was given to Dr. Stephen King as part of St. Lucia's independence anniversary. King gave insight into the laborious yet rewarding path that led him to become a recipient of the prestigious honor. The, the St. Lucia um, Cross is awarded to an individual who has um, contributed to national development and society. Um, my own journey uh, in that um, process has gone along the lines. I started off really and truly in medicine um, and it was actually in Sufria in um, 1983 that um, I sort of became enamored with what is community service and what is community development. He says that his love for community manifested in three folds. First, by providing exceptional laboratory services to the people of St. Lucia. Second, by co-founding the HIV and AIDS program. And lastly, spearheading the anti-violence campaign, rightfully called RISE. Uh, that has been um, extremely rewarding, and um, that work continues, and that's not going to stop. And in fact, the St. Lucia Cross, I think, encourages me to do more of that work. You know, we had the 40th independence of our country, and um, I enjoyed listening to Marcia Thomas, um, who um, gave the speech. She's the chairperson of the awards committee. And she reminded us of Sir John Compton's words, which were, um, I have um, miles to travel and many promises to keep before I sleep. And that, I think, resonated with me because it makes me, and I would like all St. Lucians to stop and reflect on this 40th anniversary, this anniversary year, and say, can we reach across our divides? Can we not appreciate that there's so much more that we have in common than, than, than indifference? So we, are, we have so much more to unite us than we have to divide us. He added that the way forward for the people of St. Lucia remains in the development of the youth, to which he noted that adults should constantly provide positive reinforcement for the empowering of the next generation. Too often in this country we judge and we punish and that is not the way to go. We're supposed to have understanding and love and encouragement. And that's what our youth need. And, and the, the development of this country, the future of this country, is absolutely dependent on our youth. And it's in the hands of our youth. And so therefore you'd appreciate that although we talk about all this selfless giving and, and service to community, but at the end of the day it is self-serving because it is enlightened self-interest that says, me as an older person, work with young people, help young people to find their passion, find their path, find their way to manifest their perfection. Um, because why? That makes my life better. 
there to bestow the Golden Award onto Dr. King was Governor General Neville Snack. The institution of the order reads that a Governor General may award the St. Lucia Cross to no more than two persons in any two successive years. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solej Alfred. The St. Lucia Fire Service is coming off a busy weekend in lieu of activities for Independence 40. Assistant Divisional Officer in the St. Lucia Fire Service, David Antoine, says a total of 144 emergency calls were responded to. Antoine provided a breakdown of the more pressing emergency situations that occurred over the weekend. On Sunday, February 24th at approximately 4.31 a.m., fire officers from the Cassius Fire Station responded to a stabbing incident at Bacatel Cassius involving two individuals. One was found unresponsive with multiple stab wounds. He was treated on scene and en route to the Victoria Hospital. The other was left in the care of the Marshal Police. On Friday, February 22nd at approximately 11.30 a.m., Fire officers from the Cassius Fire Station responded to a stabbing incident on Jeremy Street, Cassius, involving a male individual. He was stabbed with an unknown object, as he claimed. He was assessed and treated on scene by emergency personnel and subsequently transported to the Victoria Hospital. Again on Friday, February 22nd, at approximately 8.59 a.m., Fire officers from the Cassius Fire Station responded to another stabbing incident at Sarat involving a young male. He was assessed and treated on scene by emergency personnel and subsequently transported to the Victoria Hospital. Eight of our motor vehicle accidents responded to involved motorcycles. The victims in these cases suffered minor injuries. They were assessed and treated on scene by emergency personnel and subsequently transported to a medical institution for more advanced care. The St. Lucia Fire Service also responded to seven fire calls, including six bushfires and one house fire. On Saturday, February 23rd, at approximately 12.34 a.m., fire officers from the Babano Fire Station and Cassius Fire Station responded to a house fire at Sarat. On arrival at the scene, Fire officers encountered a structure fully engulfed. The fire officers were able to control and eventually extinguish the fire. The structure measured 16 by 21 feet in dimension. He says while the fire service remains capable, motorists and pedestrians should exercise due caution to ensure that the number of emergency calls can decrease. This is the Hot 790 News. Stay with us. There's much more news coming up after the break.